Hello friends, this is uh, for the fourth semester C8 paper of De Brugge University Mathematical Physics 2023 as you have requested to solve this paper Physics Honors De Brugge University uh, So today we're going to solve this paper So this is my Insta ID was located 123 You can follow me on Insta This is my Insta ID so before we start please subscribe the channel hit the thumbs up button also share it to friends and don't forget to hit the bell icon right so if you hit the bell icon then you're gonna get uh, notified when new video will be uploaded okay so this is part one so now let's start so we're gonna start from question number two because uh, answers to the question number one which is mcqs already given in the form of sort uh, and link of sort is given in the description box i have written question number one answer then the link is provided there so you can click the link and you're gonna get the you know mcqs uh, correct options of the mcqs okay so let's start from question number two so how to solve question number two a so how to solve the first one two a so here you see there's a equation this is x square plus y square is equal to 36 uh, sorry now you are asked to uh, express it in terms of conjugate coordinates of minus 5 5 right? so what gonna be the conjugate coordinates uh, before going to that part if you see this equation this is nothing but a equation of a circle whose center is at the origin okay with radius 36 means 6 e square so radius gonna be 6 units okay radius is 6 units so here you see so we can write this way x minus 0 whole square plus y minus 0 whole square is equal to 6 square this is equation of a circle this is equation number one so this is nothing but it represents A circle with center 0 comma 0 and radius radius 6 units right radius 6 units so what is the complex conjugate of uh, you know this uh, number minus 5 plus 5 i complex conjugate of minus 5 plus 5 i is equal to 5 minus 5 comma minus 5 i so here you see now we have got the complex conjugate so its corresponding coordinate will be minus 5 comma 5 so let us shift the center to minus 5 comma 5 okay from 0 comma 0 to from 0 comma 0 to minus 5 comma 5 so now uh, the equation uh, now you see now uh, let me write this way let us take the center at this point then this equation number one becomes x minus minus 5 whole square so that's going to be x plus 5 whole square minus minus plus so we can say x plus 5 whole square similarly y minus minus 5 that means y plus 5 whole square 6 square right so radius remains same just we have uh, changed the center so x square plus 10x plus 25 y square plus 10y plus 25 is equal to 36 and uh, so we can write x square plus y square 
plus 10x plus 10y then 25 plus 25 that's gonna be 50 and 50 then if you bring that uh, minus 36 here then 15 minus 36 that's gonna be 14 right e is equal to 0 so this is the equation okay so this is the equation this is a given equation so the given equation in terms of in terms of complex coordinate of minus 5 plus 5 i is equation number 2 so let it be equation number 2 so that is what is asked so hope you have understood this now let's move on to the next question express the complex number this is the complex number okay in the form of uh, in polar form so we have already uh, learned uh, in complex numbers uh, that uh, how to express a complex number in polar form let me show you now so now let's solve question number 2b 2b so here the given complex number is minus 1 plus root 3i right so r first let me find r which is mod of z that is nothing but minus 1 square plus root 3 square right root 3 square and that's going to be equal to minus 1 square is plus 1 then root 3 square is 3 so 1 plus 3 that's going to be 4 so square root of 4 is nothing but 2 so this is equal to we have got 2 value of r is 2 so now 10 alpha let's find 10 alpha and that is nothing but more of uh, b by a that means root 3 by imaginary part by real part so that's going to be root 3 so that's going to be nothing but 10 uh, uh, root 3 is 1060 right 1060 means you can say pi by 3 10 pi by 3 sorry 10 pi by 3 is nothing but root 3 so here alpha going to be equal to pi by 3 therefore now you see what is the argument of z that means uh, the given number so here you see the point representing this is uh, this complex coordinate that is minus 1 comma root 3 that is minus 1 comma root 3 that's going to be going up right so in the second quadrant right minus 1 minus 1 comma 3 this is minus 1 comma root 3 right so it's going to be in the second quadrant so so in second quadrant what going to be the you know if uh, this is minus uh, 1 comma 3 uh, root 3 that means what so that means this is root 3 and this length is 1 so 10 alpha gives the, the uh, this this is the alpha so when you need argument then we need this angle with the positive x-axis and that's going to be equal to pi by sorry pi minus alpha right so for the second quadrant so that's why so here we're going to get uh, argument that is theta is equal to pi minus alpha since the point representing z is in second quadrant second quadrant so that's why what we're gonna have we're gonna have theta is equal to pi minus here alpha is pi by 3 so pi minus pi by 3 if you simplify it is 3 pi minus pi that's uh, divided by 3 that is nothing but 2 pi by 3 2 pi by so hope you have understood this and we have got the argument therefore the polar form the polar form of 
the given complex number is z is equal to r into cos theta cos theta plus i sin theta this is the polar form right uh, and uh, here we have got r is equal to root 2 uh, sorry not root 2 only 2 we have got 2 then we have got cos theta theta is we have got 2 pi by 3 plus i sin theta that is again 2 pi by so this is the polar form right so this is the answer now let us solve this question uh, so here uh, to answer this question let me take a new slide okay so here is the difference here you see we can uh, <coughs> express a, a function of complex variable in terms of uh, Lorentz series that we have already discussed if you have watched all my videos made on complex uh, number then you must know this and this part is called principal part okay this part is called principal part here you know powers on uh, that are negative okay so here you see in essential singularity what happens there are infinite number of terms in the principal part okay for example here you can see for example this is a function and if you expand it you know e to the power x is equal to u uh, hope you know this uh, uh, you know uh, this series x plus x square by factorial 2 plus dot 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 so on here x is nothing but 1 by z and if you put that you're gonna get this series so here you're gonna have infinite number of terms and here you see this is principal principal part because here this is 1 by z square so which is nothing but z to the power minus 2 negative powers so it is principal power so here uh, you can see that uh, and uh, here in this case uh, the essential singularity is 0 in this case okay if you put 0 then you're gonna get e to the power infinity so here essential essential singularity is z is equal to 0 here and now in this case you see in case of removable singularity the principal part doesn't exist okay so here because you can see you have z square minus 1 let us take this example z square minus 1 can be written as z plus 1 into z minus 1 and here z minus 1 z minus 1 cancels so you can say that z z minus 1 which is uh, if you take uh, it is equal to 0 then z is equal to 1 that's supposed to be a singularity but here it is removed this z minus 1 part is removed so that's why this part is called uh, you know that uh, removable removable singularity and there is no negative powers on z here so that's why principal part doesn't exist because principal part only consists negative powers of z right so hope you have understood this so now let's move on to the next question so now using the Fourier integral formula derived the Fourier cosine transformation that uh, you know I have already made a video on this topic so link is in the description box I have given question number two uh, uh, question number two I have written in the description box question number two then the link is attached with that so you can just click the link and you're gonna get the answer similarly I have already proved this one also proved that if a small f of s is the Laplace transform of f of t then Laplace transformation of e to the power a t f of t is small f of s minus s a, s minus a but uh, in that video which uh, in which i have proved this one but i have used the symbol differently i have used instead of small f of s i have used i think capital f of s and uh, instead of this uh, capital f of t i have used i think small f of t and here this is going to be capital f of s minus uh, in, the, in that video so when you're going to answer this question uh, as in the question this symbol 
should be used according to the questions okay so uh, if i had used uh, capital f of s but in the given uh, in the in this question it is given that uh, small f of s so use here is the screenshot of the video where i have proved this i uh, made a mistake there this supposed to be you know capital f of s only okay capital f of s okay so there should not be any uh, that should be capital f of s and uh, that's it but uh, in this question in this question you see uh, they are using instead of uh, capital f of s in this question they have used uh, small f of s minus a replace it by this because use the symbols according to the question okay and in the question instead of capital small f of t they have given capital f of t right and uh, and instead of this capital F of S, instead of this capital F of S, use a small f of S according to this question. Okay, that's it. And uh, that's uh, you need to do. Um, okay, so that is the answer to the. Uh, that is the answer to question number. Question number E. Okay, so I will give you the link uh, in the description box question number 2 e and link will be given the video in which i have proved this one i haven't proved only this one i have proved many properties okay of laplace transformation just you need to check the first shifting theorem okay uh, maybe before the first shifting theorem i have proved the linear property as well maybe okay so if you want to skip then you can skip uh, few minutes to get this topic Okay, so hope you have understood this. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.